mining is more expensive than ever. Uh, it's it's super super difficult to get into the mining space unless you have like thousands and thousands of dollars to you know just drop on a on a mining rig and get involved. And uh, you know even then you are not even guaranteed to make a profit, and the profit that you do make is going to be pretty tiny, and you're probably going to uh, sell your, your bitcoins anyway to pay for your necessary expenses like electricity and things like that. And then, you know, when you look at the large mining operations, um, like the, the gigantic mining farms in China uh, that we've recently seen exposed in uh, outlets like thecoinsman.com did a great in-depth um, uh, report into a Chinese mining farm. Like, these people have huge, gigantic warehouses of ASICs that are mining Bitcoin. That's their sole purpose. Like, not just a machine sole purpose to mine Bitcoin, a whole gigantic warehouse mining Bitcoin. And, you know, it costs a lot to set that up and to pay bills every single month. I believe the st statistic was uh, they pay $60,000 every single month in electricity alone uh, just for that one mining farm which is insane and you know that's the, also a huge waste of electricity yes yeah huge huge waste and the electricity company does not take bitcoin you can be damn sure of that <laughs> so like it's they have to sell immediately to to keep in their profit and like who knows maybe they sell all the bitcoins they mine maybe they don't even want to be invested at all in, in a bearish market like this so you've got that huge selling pressure from gigantic mining operations um, who have to do that to to stay in business and keep operating and, and, and pay their suppliers and pay the electricity company. So that's that's more that's more selling pressure. And that's a symptom of the proof of work scheme that Bitcoin currently uses to secure the blockchain. Super, super costly. And it's only getting worse. It's only getting worse. Like. Um, like I said, you know, small time miners, small time miners, as in people who pay over a thousand dollars for a mining rig, that's small time. Now, those people are going to be pushed out of the market pretty soon enough. Anyway, if the difficulty keeps rising and, and they won't be able to stay profitable, they'll shut down their mining rigs. And then basically, eventually, like, I, I don't want to sound too pessimistic, but we got to look at this as a real possibility. Like eventually there could just be, you know, a handful, maybe a dozen maybe two dozen or whatever it is, just a handful of gigantic mining farms that, you know, just mine Bitcoin and no one else can possibly afford to get involved with the network and get involved with securing the network. So that's not a very bright feature for uh, Bitcoin mining, in my opinion. And like, in order to fix that, like some kind of change to the protocol will be, will be needed. I don't know if it's going to be a hard fork or what it's going to be, but like Bitcoin mining, it's it's not in a good place right now. Not only the down the downward pressure on the price, but also the fact that like any any government with enough resources and guns can drop in there and point a, point a few guns to the heads of these people who are managing these mining farms and basically take control of those mining farms just like that. So that's the danger of centralized mining operations. Well, I think what we might see on a more um, short-term scale is we might see mining as a whole slow down. You know, not just the little guys, but the big farms also. Because, um, you know, if ever, you know, all things being equal, you know, the price is going to keep going down. It, you know, it could go way down. Um, and uh, you know, at some point mining in general is just going to become unprofitable and you know they're going to have to stop because um especially these these uh big you know mining farms they're not you know they're not invested ideologically so you know they're not going to mine at a loss um so you they're gonna they're gonna slow their mining down and it may you know the price may even go low enough to where um you know they might stop mining altogether and the supply will uh you know the supply will stop growing um, but you know, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad. It'll give it'll put a you know brief pause on mining centralization and give uh, 
you know, I don't want to say the foundation because I have no faith in them, but, you know, it'll give the community um, a little more time to work on problems with the protocol. Um, maybe Gavin Andreessen will come up with a solution. Who knows? You know, um, uh, the problem is a bunch of people have come up with possible solutions, and I'm sure that Gavin Andreessen has thought, like, a lot about this issue, along with a lot of devs in the community. But the problem is you have to get the miners to agree on these changes before they become official, or at least get most of the rest of the network to agree. And that's the hardest thing, is getting people to agree on changes that might not necessarily be in line with their personal interests and their personal investments in mining rigs. So that's that's the really hard part. And I think Mike Hearn has referred to this problem before as well. Like any proposed changes to the code and developments, they just result, result in, you know, f flame wars and, and, and arguments between the devs about, about what to do. And there's a bunch of entrenched interests. So it's really, really hard to implement changes to the protocol. But like, don't get me wrong. I, I, I hope that someone can figure it out and improve this a little bit because no doubt Bitcoin is, is not perfect. It's, there's still a lot of flaws. And the great thing is, you know, being a programmable currency, um, you know, based on P2P networking, changes can be implemented uh, in an easier way than changing a corrupt government institution. But it's still it's still challenging, and it's still going to take a lot of work and convincing people to you know change what they're doing. Right. Well, you know, even you when you do have to convince the miners, uh, you know, the ones who aren't really giving. Or, well, not really saving, but improving Bitcoin. Yeah, like yeah, that that would make things continue on the way they are for a while. But um, you know, eventually that's still you know they're still gonna you know turn around and bite themselves in the ass because they're uh, the the price will continue going down as centralization can continue, continues to increase. So they're still gonna eventually have to shut down their rigs. Um, you know, so at that point. Bitcoin could get low enough to where, you know, the major players in the mining industry just kind of leave and sell all their equipment and stuff. Uh, you know, and then, like, we kind of get to start over a little bit because um, the only people that will be left are the ones who are, like, really, really invested Dedicated ideologically in Bitcoin. Yeah and, yeah, and then those will be the ones who start adopting the new versions and, and uh, you know, things like that. Because, and, you know, just I want to go back to one thing i kind of kind of have this little hunch that you know the price is or the market is still trying to correct from mount gox um because you know as everybody knows the price got way pumped by mount gox um and you know the willy bot yeah uh, which was we figured out about you know several months ago and so um yeah can we know, let's just go through that just a quick summary of the willy bot um was it basically like it would it would buy like twice as much Bitcoin as it was actually paying. It would get twice as much Bitcoin, and it would it would pump the price, right? Like a thousand dollars wasn't the real price because it was being manipulated by bots. Yeah, I can't. I don't really. It was such a long time ago since I wrote that article that I can't really remember exactly what was happening. But um, but basically there were these two bots, Willie and, and they were like they're called Willie and Marcus, and they operated, um. You know, there's strong evidence to suggest that they operated actually inside the Mt. Gox exchange, and they were basically like fraudulently pumping up the price because they would um they would buy Bitcoin without actually spending any money. They would just like put they would just like it would be put on the ledger that it was a buy order, so the price would go up and up and up and up, and then um. You know, but then when Mt. Gox so crashed, shady. when it, when it like shut down, you know, the whole thing kind of fell apart and the price fell way low. You know, but then there were some other things that you know kept pumping it up a little bit. Uh, you know, and put a you know gave a brief break to the fall. Um, so you know, I think I think you know we very well could still be correcting the Mt. Gox price uh, yeah. or the Mt. Gox bubble. Uh, you know for lack of a better word. It wasn't really a bubble, but that's a different discussion. So, no telling how low the floor is going to be. Um, 
so yeah, you know, as things are going to start settling out, may, maybe not, you know, soon. It might take maybe a year or two, but things will start settling out. Um, the price will reach a point uh, where it's more reflective of the market sentiment towards Bitcoin and not the, you know, exchange pumps. Um, and then I think, I think we're going to see a lot of miners like actually get out of the game. And, you know, that, that is, will in no way fix the problem. Um, but it will kind of slow it down a little bit and give, give, you know, the developers a chance to maybe try to find a solution. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I really, I disagree that, you know, that large mining operations would get out of the game. Like before they get out of the game, the small miners are going to get out of the game way b before the mining farms do. Um, because they've just dropped so much money and so much investment into these, you know, hundreds of ASIC machines that are stacked on these shelves. And for them to get out of the game is much harder than small-time miners getting out of the game. Um, and, and plus the, the fact that, like, large mining operations are the ones that are most profitable. If they have the most hashing power or a good chunk of hashing power... And they also get a good chunk of block rewards. Uh, they they get the most profits from the Bitcoin blockchain and mining. So, like before we start seeing them get out, we're gonna see all the small time miners get out first. And, and that's I mean that's been happening for 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 months now. Is you can't you can't even get involved anymore unless you spend over a thousand dollars. Yeah, well that's why I said mining as a whole would slow down, right? Because it doesn't matter how big your operation is, your profit is still based on the price of Bitcoin or the value of Bitcoin. Um, and it doesn't matter how valuable Bitcoin is, the more that are mined into existence, the harder it gets to mine them and the less you get per block, while at the same time your electricity costs are going up. So you know, at some point the price of Bitcoin is going to be so low that even the biggest mining farms they're going to be paying, you know, maybe millions of dollars uh, in electricity um, to get, like, you know, nine hundred thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin, if that. Mm. Uh, you know, so it it doesn't matter how big the the mining uh, farm is or how profitable it is right now. Um, their profits are going to dwindle as difficulty increases, um, and it's going to increase as long as mining goes on. It has, you know, it doesn't really have anything to do with the value. As more people, um, so, people get involved in mining than hashing increases. You're saying that hashing can like kind of level out and maybe even drop a little bit, right? If if people get out, like eventually people are going to stop wanting to get involved in Bitcoin mining, right? Because it's not, it's just simply yeah. not as profitable as it once was. Yeah, that's what it was designed to do. Like, um, that's what makes Bitcoin deflationary on a whole. Like right now, obviously, it's kind of inflationary, but you know, on the long run. Uh, Bitcoin was designed to be deflationary because, um, you know, the the more Bitcoins there are, the harder it is to mine them. Um, and that's true regardless of what the price is. So if it goes low enough where it's, uh, where it's too expensive to mine them, you know, you're putting more into, you're paying more in electricity than you are getting out of your block rewards, uh, then nobody's going to mine. So, um, yeah. I and think then hashing power would go down. Overall, yeah, th yeah. Then hashing power would go down overall because people uh, would just, you know, they'd stop mining because they'd be losing money and not getting money. Yeah. And the whole point of mining is to, you know, profit off of it. So, yeah, centralization is a problem. It's got to be fixed. Um, but I think at some point we could see a break in it. Um, who, like, who knows when it could be? Because you know, tomorrow something could happen to make the price skyrocket, and then mining will, you it's know, profitable all of a sudden, go yeah. up even faster. But I think, like on a long term, like on like really way out in the horizon, um, the price is probably going to go way low just because of a, you know a bunch of different factors that are producing uh, selling pressure, and uh, you know combined with the fact that last year the price got pumped like way higher than it probably should have been, or if it, or the, way higher than it would have been if Mountain Gox you know never pulled their hold. You know, yeah. <laughs> their whole gig 